Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on sorting algorithms. I know, I know, but today's algorithm is a little bit different because it is parallel in nature. After the break, we're going to be taking a look at the odd even transposition sort. You're watching yet another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, sorting algorithms are a great example of the first, you know, semi-complex algorithm you'll have to hear about in a computer science education. What you'll find at the end of the day is that, well, many sorting algorithms do take some time. In fact, you'll find that simpler algorithms like bubble sort or selection sort take an extremely long amount of time. And the more items you add in, the worse it gets. You can use certain fancy techniques to actually make things better, but it still takes quite a bit of time, which is why another solution to this problem is to actually use a parallel approach. Hardware like our GPUs can actually do a lot of computation at the same time, and if we take advantage of this to do sorting, it can actually give us some pretty fast results. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the odd even transposition sort, which does just that. However, before we actually jump in to look at this algorithm, let's try to understand the very basic sorting algorithm this is based on, namely bubble sort. So let's just very quickly recap on bubble sort here. Remember that the idea is when you have an array of items, you want to go from left to right and look at each pair of numbers. If they're not in order, we swap them. So let's look at a very short array of five items. We look at the first pair, they're not out of order, so we move on. Items four and one are out of order, so we swap them. Next pair, no problem. Last pair, we swap two and five. And what's more interesting is that item number five has now been put in its proper location. Let's go through for a second pass. We swap items as long as they're out of order. And again, this puts item number four in place. We don't actually have to move on to compare the last set of items for the very simple reason that, well, they are already sorted. We know they are in place. We don't have to go and look at them again. Very quickly, moving back, 1 and 3 in order, no problem. 2 and 3 are swapped, putting 3 in place. 1 and 2, again, are in order. And this actually sorts our entire list. Now, at face value, you can't really parallelize bubble sorts for the very simple reason that every little operation is dependent on the result of the operation right before it. This inherently locks us into a very serialized way of doing things. Thankfully, however, just a little tweak to this algorithm, just a little reimagination of how everything moves around, turns this into an easily parallelizable algorithm called the odd even transposition sort. Let's take a look at how this works. Okay, let's take a look at the magic of the odd even transposition sort. The idea is instead of swapping, you know, all the pairs sequentially, the idea is we first sort the even pairs, then we swap the odd pairs. Let's take a look at how this works. Now let's increase the number of items a bit. Over here we have 8 items, and the idea is this. We look at all the even pairs first, simultaneously. Remember this is a parallel algorithm. So yeah, in this case, these are pairwise in order, whereas these are not. So we swap. When we're done looking at the even items, we now have to move on to look at the odd items. In this case, the first and last item are actually not looked at at all, while we swap the other pairs. So of course, do take a close look at the background here. At first, we were actually checking this pair. Now we're actually offsetting it all by one, and we're looking at the other pair, positions that were not compared before. So yeah, that's where the odd even side of things actually comes in. Anyway, we compare these numbers. These two sets are out of order, so we swap them. That actually concludes one pass of the odd even sort. Now, clearly we're not done yet. In fact, if we were to look at the results of this pass, you'll realize that some items were even moved in the wrong direction. Namely, 5 has actually moved more towards the left when it should have gone right, and 6 was pushed to the very end. So yeah, this is clearly not good, but that's alright, because we're not done yet. On our second pass, we do the exact same thing. 
quite a few pairs are pairwise out of order, so we go ahead and swap them. We move on to our even pass. Again, everything here is pairwise out of order, so we go ahead and swap them as well. Now, at the end of this pass, things are looking much better. Everything is sort of getting nudged to roughly the right position. And in fact, this might not be immediately obvious, but items 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are actually already in their correct positions. Only 1 and 2 needs to be swapped among themselves. Of course, the algorithm doesn't know this, which is why we go ahead to do our third pass. Items 1 and 2 are swapped, of course, and in fact, we already have a sorted list. When we try to do our even pass, nothing really happens because everything is already in place. So even though we have eight items here, we've actually completed in what we consider six half passes. So yeah, that's great. This was a randomly sorted array, but if we were to actually give it the worst case, you can see that it will still be sorted quite quickly. If you know your bubble sort well, you'll know that this is the worst case when we have everything in the reverse order. Everything is going to have to move quite a large distance, but yeah, just see how this algorithm actually handles it. We start off on our first pass, everything gets swapped. We move on to the odd items, everything gets swapped again. So yeah, we basically repeat this, going to the even items, then the odd items, so on and so forth. And what you find is that after just four complete passes, everything has gone back in place. So what this tells us is that in the worst case, if we have eight items, we're going to have to do eight half passes. In other words, we're going to have to do n passes through an array in the worst case to actually sort it. Of course, just out of interest, let's actually see how things have changed over time. This is kind of messy. This is kind of messy, so let's take a look at the individual elements. Item number one has gotten bubbled all the way from the right to the left, but every other item has basically sort of bounced against the edge to go back to its correct position. So yeah, this is just a very interesting pattern that I've observed when we're actually sorting items that are in the reverse order. Of course, item number eight also goes straight to its correct position. So yeah, there you go. Just a very sort of pictorial way to show you that it takes eight half passes to get us our final sorted result. And there you go. That was the odd even transposition sort. And yeah, as you can see, because we're doing a whole lot of the work at once, really, we can actually clear everything within n passes. Now, here's the deal. In parallel algorithms, there is a different way of actually measuring how efficient an algorithm is, and that actually takes into account both the number of passes required as well as the amount of work done per pass. And if we want to actually analyze this algorithm in the same way, we'll find that it is still actually inefficient. It is in fact equivalent to O n squared, which shouldn't be surprising because after all, this is a derivative of bubble sort. However, thanks to the fact that we are doing everything in parallel, this inefficiency is kind of masked. If we were to directly compare this algorithm against bubble sort, we would of course expect it to do better, thanks to its parallel nature. So yeah, basically that's it. That's all there is for this episode. I hope you've gained some insight today. But yeah, until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.